When I was in grade nine, we were assigned a novel to read. That novel was The Day of the Triffids by John Winham. This is the livery of that novel that I read in school. Little did I know that this would be the introduction I had to one of my favorite science fiction novelists. Growing up in the 1960s and 1970s, I first saw Star Trek, Space 1999, and other movies and TV shows. I would seek out the novels based on the episodes of those TV shows and even the photo books based on episodes of Star Trek. I did peruse through our school library looking for science fiction as well and read some Asimov and Bradbury and Clark. I remember in particular reading Planet of the Apes by Pierre Boulle and being blown away by the story. But my introduction to John Windham was very memorable. From that point on, I started to notice John Windham books in the bookstore. And at that time, Penguin was coming out with this livery of John Windham novels. I didn't pick up all 10 at that point. I do remember picking up The Midwich Cuckoos and Chalky and reading the short stories from The Seeds of Time and Consider Her Ways. Webb was an interesting one because it had been released posthumously. As I returned to my love of SF, I returned to John Windham. I sought out all the books that were published in a couple different series. So this Penguin series has cover art by Peter Lord. I think this is the most attractive livery of all John Windham series. I also found that John Windham novels were being reissued in the Modern Library series. And within that series was released a novel that hadn't been released for a long time. Foul Play Suspected. It's not a science fiction novel, but it is John Winham's first novel. Then I started to look for some of his early work before his popularity came about with Day of the Triffids. John Winham had some success before World War II. Coronet Books published five books that gathered his novels and short stories. And then there was World War II. John Windham was on the beaches of Normandy. He carried a radio and was part of the communication teams on the front lines. Following World War II, he returned to writing. In the late 1940s, he started writing The Day of the Triffids. But he wasn't able to finish it. So he started a second novel called Plan for Chaos. This novel was rejected by a number of publishers and has only been published in 2010. Then he returned to The Day of the Triffids. He finished it, found a publisher, and found great success. The Day of the Triffids has not been out of print since 1951. This novel held up a mirror to the horrors of World War II. Civilization was on the brink of a breakdown. He followed up Day of the Triffids with The Kraken Wakes, a different sort of story of an alien invasion where the aliens are not seen and are underwater. Then we have The Chrysalids, a nuclear post-apocalyptic future where mutants are not tolerated. What might arguably be his best novel, The Midwich Cuckoos, comes next. What if the small English town of Midwich was cut off from the world all the young women within the town became pregnant and had children. These children resembled each other, and these children could communicate with each other in ways that we did not understand. What would happen to the children of Midwich? What would happen to the people of Midwich? As a cuckoo pushes the egg out of a nest and lays its own within it, these children are cuckoos. What will happen to Midwich? And perhaps the world. Then we have a curious book by John Windham and Lucas Parks. Lucas Parks is actually 
a pseudonym for John Windham. The outward urge is four stories connected by one family. It envisions our path from Earth to the planets of our solar system. This was a departure from the four popular novels written since World War II. It actually harkens back to some of his early work in the 1930s. I think the publisher, and perhaps John Windham himself, were a little uneasy how it would take a shift of tone from those novels. So perhaps that's why he used a pseudonym as a writing partner. Then there's two short story collections, Consider Her Ways and Others, and The Seeds of Time. The next novel, Trouble with Lichen. What would happen if you discovered that milk that had been left out for a long time had a little piece of lichen in it, and it didn't curdle? It didn't turn sour? Well, as they take a look at this lichen, they discover it has anti-aging properties. Chalky is the last novel published during John Windham's life. It is a very short novel, a very extended story from a magazine. It is a story of a boy who has an imaginary friend. Or is it really imaginary? Is Chalky an entity living within the boy? I found this novel riveting. John Wyndham died in 1969. Webb was published in 1979. In the 1970s, Coronet Books published John Windham's works prior to World War II. These are his novels, his short stories, and novellas in science fiction. In 1935, The Secret People was published. It was in 1935 that his first full-length novel was serialized in Odom's Passing Show, a family weekly lavishly designed on the lines of America's Saturday Evening Post. Then there was Stowaway to Mars, also known as the Planet Plane, And then we have short stories and novelas. Sleepers of Mars. It collects Sleepers of Mars, Worlds to Barter, Invisible Monster, The Man from Earth, and The Third Vibrator. And here you can see some of the copyrights. Wanderers of Time. Before the Triffids, that's an introduction, Wanderers of Time, Derelict of Space, Child of Power, The Last Lunarians, and The Puffball Menace. The Puffball Menace is actually a precursor to the Day of the Triffids. And last collection, these are novellas. Exiles on Asperus. Exiles on Asperus, No Place Like Home, and The Venus Adventure. Publication dates, Exiles on Asperus, 1933, The Venus Adventure is 1932, and No Place Like Earth is 1951. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, Penguin published 10 books of John Wyndham. Here they are in order of original publication. In 1951, The Day of the Triffids. In 1953, The Kraken Wakes. In 1955, The Chrysalids. And our first collection of stories, The Seeds of Time, 1956. The Seeds of Time has 10 stories. Chronoclasm, 
Time to Rest, Meteor, Survival, Polly's Peepholes, The Opposite Number, Pillar to Post, Dumb Martian, Compassion Circuit, and Wildflower. Then in 1957, The Midwich Cuckoos was published. 1959 saw The Outward Urge. 1960, Trouble with Lichen. Then the second collection of stories in this livery, Consider Her Ways and Others, 1961. It has six stories. Consider Her Ways. Odd, Oh Where Now Is Peggy McRafferty, Stitch in Time, Random Quest, and A Long Spoon. Then the last novel that was published during John Wyndham's life, Chalky, 1968. One novel that had been shopped around before his death was Webb, and this is the first publication of Webb in 1979. This is the most recent publication line that I have collected. There are six published in paperback and nine in total as audio editions. I will include three of the covers from audio edition only. They are Plan for Chaos, The Outward Urge, and Web. Foul Play Suspected is actually not a science fiction novel. It is a thriller. It was published in 1935. It has only recently come back into print with Modern Library. Then we have Stowaway to Mars, Day of the Triffids, The Kraken Awakes, The Midwich Cuckoos, and Trouble with Lichen. I do like these cover designs. The illustrations are by Anders Nilsson and the graphic design by Cassie Gonzalez. Now we'll look at my miscellaneous collection. The first one we'll look at is the short story collection, Jizzle. It contains the stories, Jizzle, Technical Slip, A Present from Brunswick, Chinese Puzzle, Esmeralda, How Do I Do, Una, Affair of the Heart, Confidence Trick, the Wheel, Look Natural Please, Her Force to Dream, Reservation Deferred, Heaven Sent, and More Spin Against. There is a second short story collection in this group. In the American publication from Valentine Books, Tales of Goose Flesh and Laughter actually has eight stories from Jizzle. There are three stories that did not appear in Jizzle, Compassion Circuit, Opposite Number, and Wildflower. Then we have the copy that is of the livery that I read in grade nine, of The Day of the Triffids. And here, this is the first paperback copy in the United States of Day of the Triffids but it's called Revolt of the Triffids. You can see here, it says Day of the Triffids underneath. I think this is a wonderful cover and it has a nice green text cloth. Lovers in a Doomed World. Now, why was it called Revolt of the Triffids? Well, Collier Magazine did a serial of the novel before it was in print. They called it Revolt of the Triffids. And in fact, there are some differences between Collier's Revolt of the Triffids and the eventual The Day of the Triffids. Then in 2009, Plan for Chaos was published. And this publication here from Penguin is from 2010, the first mass market publication. After reading this book, I can understand why it wasn't published back in 1950 and 51. And finally, Hidden Windham. This is a biography. 
and it focuses in on a special relationship that John Wyndham had with Grace Wilson. Life, Love, and Letters. And here's how the collection looks as it's shelved. 